So we here we are. Week, go. week five. Week five. We were just saying. I can't believe it's week five already of well being Wednesdays, and um, I'm here again, obviously, with Claire and Robin of the Female Fitness Academy. And this week we are talking about constantly cooking <laughs> and how that is in lockdown. And we have got a very special guest with us today. We've got Sarah Woods, who was a finalist on BBC One's Best Home Cook. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you're finding lockdown? Well, thank you for having me on uh, your Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, I think... Uh, I think particularly when you say uh, you're fed up of cooking constantly, that's kind of immediately pricked my ears because I was like, okay, well, how can I help? Um, and, uh, you know, it's been, been interesting uh, chatting to, to Claire before the call, um, you know, because she, she, she spoke about uh, uh, some of the issues that your listeners are having. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keen, keen to assist. I'm in the same boat as everybody else. We've all kind of been scuppered, haven't we, by COVID and plans have been put on hold and, uh, you know, shelves. Uh, and uh, I guess we're cooking more, we're spending more time uh, with our family. And, you know, for me, food is, is a way of engaging with my family. Uh, so I'm keen to help uh, with, uh, you know, cooking constantly, turning that into a positive. Um, and, uh, you know, how can we make it more enjoyable so it doesn't feel like a chore? Yeah, because I'm, I'm finding, well, how are you finding it, Claire and Robin? I'm kind of finding that <clears throat> I like cooking. I'm not the best cook in the world, but I do enjoy it. My husband's very good. But the difficulties that I'm finding is that where we would normally have lots of food in, and then when we're running short on things, we pop to the shops, or I'll pick something up on the way home from work. Because we're doing like one big shop a week and trying to get everything in. I'm finding that we're going through that much quicker for some reason. And then when it comes to it, we're running out of bits and pieces. And then that's when I start like, panic eating almost <laughs> like stick the toast in beans on toast tonight and there's nothing wrong with that at all but I would like to be a bit more creative and I don't know whether that's just because I'm getting a bit fed up of that constant cooking and going like I think Claire it was you that said wasn't it that it just constantly feels like you just made breakfast and then you're on to the next meal yeah, yeah or, or constantly feel like you're cleaning up after cooking I feel like yeah. I'm either cooking or cleaning up <laughs> I know, and we were saying last week, because we're working from home as well, I haven't got an office at home, so my kitchen table is also my desk that I'm doing all my work on, which is not good at all. So just get into like a roll, and I've got everything spread out, I've got my, like, my working brain on, and then it's like, oh, I need to make lunch, and let's just put it all into piles and stuff like that, so... And then for me, I, I, have, um, I have one of my daughters is a really strict vegetarian. So I make everything twice. I'd quite happily eat vegetarian food, but my husband does prefer to have meat and my other daughter does. So every meal, I make two lots of every breakfast, every lunch, every dinner, because um, I make a vegetarian version, which I always try and make more of. So then I can kind of batch that up for something else. I just feel that I do really feel like oh my god I'm, I'm making like eight meals a day or something every single day and I've only just realized how often we must, must actually eat out or eat lunch on the go or because the kids obviously eat at school um yeah. and then if we've got clubs and stuff sometimes we'll grab something out or it's a dead quick snacky tea whereas I'm actually making full meals three times a day and I think actually Maybe I'm doing too too much, and I could yeah. make it easier for you myself. Are. You are, you you are doing too much. I think I think there's probably a pressure for us to be like domestic goddesses all of a sudden, where we're making these you know three meals a day, um, and feel the pressure to, to to cook from scratch with every single meal. And the first thing I would say to you all is take the pressure off yourselves, um, because you're not obliged to do that. And getting the family involved in the, in cooking, you know, they're for the eating but actually getting them involved in the cooking process um, is, uh, is key because then you don't feel like you're doing it by yourselves. Um, I've got a question. How many of you plan your meals for the week? See, I normally do. I would normally do. Yeah, I would normally do meal prep. I find it much easier to be organized when I'm at work because I know that I would cook my meals the night before, have everything ready, or I would batch cook something um, and then have that a few, for a few days in the week. But for some reason, I just, 
I don't know whether it is that that running out of food thing or because I'm eating with the family they don't always eat the same as me and because a three-year-old I don't know how you guys find it he's he's at that age where he's really quite picky and although we try to encourage him not to be there are times where he'll just go I'm not eating that <laughs> like oh well, now we've got to cook again because I'm needing to eat something what about the rest of you I'm cooking, I seem to be cooking roast dinners all the time. I, I, I don't know why, I just really want them at the moment. And we've just had one for tonight, a full roast. And usually I do one nearly every Sunday, unless we're going out. But I've just been wanting one in the week. And I think it's because I find it quite easy, I find it quite easy to cook a roast because you can put it on and leave it there and I can carry on working in between and um, girls can do the veggies and stuff like that, like peel the veggies. But yeah, I feel like I'm eating like three a week. I think it's because then <laughs> when I've done a big chicken, I can have like chicken salad or chicken sandwiches and like the next day. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of that for some reason. So I guess you're doing the right thing in terms of using, you know, cooking a big meal like a roast. And I normally cook a roast about once a week, normally on a Sunday. And then use, transform the leftovers into a completely different dish. So. Uh, for example, we had uh, a brisket on Sunday and then we transformed it into um, uh, a beef stir fry or you could have pulled, pulled beef tacos. So it's a completely different dish, um, uh, yet, you know, you're using leftovers and reusing. Um, I guess it would. Do, do you tend to, to, to just cook a roast in its entirety, uh, you know, again, twice a week? Or, or do you tend to vary up the type of things that, you, that you're actually making, the type of dishes? Um, I do pretty much the same roast every single time. Um, I like to be a bit more adventurous. I don't, I'd like to be a bit more adventurous, but then I know if I did, the kids would be like, what have you done? This doesn't taste like the same as normal. Um, but no, other than using the chicken for like different, um, different lunches, then you know, I don't really change it up. I guess cooking becomes a chore when you're boring. You know, if you're cooking the same dishes yeah. constantly. Uh, I think that's when it becomes a chore because for me, cooking's you know for me I'm I, I'm a cook. I, I've always loved I loved cooking and using new ingredients and cooking new recipes for me is the most exciting thing. Uh, and and even for me, you know, my boys are quite basic, uh, so sometimes it's cajoling them into um, you know oh, well, you know try this. And my son's terrible. I mean, he would live on fish fingers if he could, uh, but uh, you know it's getting them involved in the meal planning. So I ask him, okay, well you know, what do you want on the menu this week? And if they have a steak, if you pardon the pun, in, in what's actually uh, going to be planned for that week's meals, that, that you know, could make them interested in, in, in the cooking of that meal. And I give him responsibility in cooking. We made an apple crumble literally um, earlier this week. But if they have that involvement and that ownership, so the onus isn't always on you to do the cooking, but actually whoever uh, came up with the idea to, to cook the dish on that day and you and they're actively involved it's kind of spreading the load and it's exciting for them too because you know they're um they're, they're cooking what they've suggested uh, and it's engaging everybody in, in meal times how old are your boys sarah do you mind me asking well uh, i have when i say boys i've got a big boy and a little boy uh, <laughs> so i don't tell you uh, how old the big boy is <laughs> But my son Austin is 10. Um, right. So well, he's at that age where, you know, I sometimes have to lure him away from the Xbox, which I don't mind because, you know, he's done his schoolwork and homeschooling, that's a whole different topic, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we've, yeah. We've brushed um, on that before. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, I, I give him time on his Xbox as a reward uh, and so he can chat with his chums and stuff. But I get him involved in the cooking process because otherwise it does become a chore. And I, and I get what you're saying. It's like, you know, ultimately, I guess I was cooking one meal a day for the whole family uh, prior to lockdown, and now it's three meals. Mm. But what I do find is, is, is getting them involved and making meal times interactive. For example, we have fajitas and tacos quite a lot. So it's an assembly job. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Claire was talking about, well, I have a vegetarian daughter and, you know, uh, you know and, and other meat eaters. So if, for, for, for example, if we take tacos or, or, or fajitas, you know, you've got lots of different fillings and lots of different ingredients, yet it's the same meal, but you can make your taco to your own individual taste. So I think that really works quite well. And it also, you don't have to plate, you know, literally serving all of the components of, of your dish and, you know, they're doing the hard Let work. Of the exactly. Uh, and it's, and it's just, you know, more, more engaging, I think. Making mealtimes fun is, uh, it doesn't then make it a chore. 
Yeah, my you... kids, as I say, my kids always like a buffet. They're a massive fan of like, oh, can we have like a buffet tea? Just little like bits of everything that they can just pick at and um, help themselves to sometimes rather than just having like a set meal that we're yeah. having. I think they tend to eat more then as well, don't they? They tend mm. to like eat more than they would if you put it on the plate because they feel obliged to eat it, I suppose, if you if you put it on. Whereas if it's buffet, it's a bit more... Yeah. A hundred percent. And if they've got a favourite part of the buffet, for example, in a roast, you know, somebody might like cauliflower cheese, they can take ownership of making that cauliflower cheese. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not always pressure on you to feel as though, you know, you're, you're, you're a slave to the kitchen. And, and this is what I mean. Have a day off. Uh, take the pressure off yourself. Um, and, you know, you don't have to be a domestic goddess and cook everything from scratch. And do shortcuts, you know. I mean, ultimately, I think it, it is... It is important for you to have a day off and sometimes we'll order a delivery or um, my husband will cook something out of the freezer, um, you know, just because, you know, it's important, uh, you know, for you not to feel chained to the kitchen and feel, oh, well, it's a treat for me not to have to do the cooking and somebody's doing that for me. And then it makes you more motivated to go back into the kitchen the next day and do it better in my case. But uh, we won't tell him that. We won't tell him that. But another great tool, you know, particularly for uh, if you like your roast, is one pot cooking or tray bakes are fantastic. Literally shove everything in a big tray and it cooks itself. Uh, like one of our favourite dishes is uh, our chicken thighs with chorizo and new potatoes. So literally it's an assembly job. Put a few herbs, oils and spices on and it cooks itself. And hey, presto, you've, you've got a great dish for the family to enjoy. Yeah, one thing that I've dug out during this is the slow cooker, and that's been a bit of a godsend. The same thing, I've thrown a load of ingredients in in the morning, left it, we've had it for tea, and then we've got like lunch and tea again for the next few days, and that has been brilliant, actually. So do you, do you meal prep for the week then, Sarah? Is that how you stay organised with this? Yeah, absolutely, because, because we're limited to, to one big shop per week, so we kind of have to be organised, because otherwise then it is a fear. Uh, you know, that, oh, I'm going to run out. Uh, and, you know, will there be enough to go around? But also, my, my you know, let me give you an, a, an anecdote. My mum used to visit, um, and sometimes because she lives a few hours away, she'd visit for a few days. I can't bear any, any longer than that, but a few days I can tolerate. <laughs> and she'd often look in my bins and say, Sarah, why are you throwing that away? You know, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be throwing that away. And, but when it comes to the point at which she looks through my bins, I have to be thinking to myself, mother, it's time for you to go home. <laughs> But to me, <laughs> she has had a point. So one of the things that we do is uh, the vegetable peelings uh, uh, from carrots, parsnips, potatoes. I keep them. Um, I, either, I either oven roast them with a bit of oil, and, you can, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you can keep it healthy with just a spray oil uh, and a bit, of, uh, a bit of seasoning roasted uh, and making vegetable crisps. They're delicious. Um, and... You know, a, 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 um, a roast dinner is quite heavy, so you don't always want to eat these vegetable crisps beforehand. And the freezer is your friend. So if you prep the vegetables, coat them in a little bit of uh, oil and seasoning, you freeze them. Uh, and then that's a really quick and easy snack. Uh, so if you do have, you know, those pans for crisps, there you go. Ready in about... Great idea. Minutes. I love that. that yeah, great. I imagine yeah. the kids would love that as well. Absolutely, because carrots have a natural sweetness, parsnips have a natural sweetness. And who doesn't like crisp potatoes? <laughs> so, you know, it's win-win and then you're not wasting. And actually, it's really changed a lot of people's mindsets of, uh, of you know, how much have we been wasting beforehand and how much of these vegetables uh, and these, these ingredients that, that we've brought and invested in, you know, we, we need to use every single part of it. I've just thrown, I'm just thinking I've just thrown a load of the peelings away just now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try that next time, definitely. Yeah, I'm going to try yeah. that. Super tasty. I mean, I like mine with a bit of mayo as well. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> you can treat yourself. And I, I guess ultimately, um, you know, we, we were talking about snacking and, and having these bad items in the cupboards. I guess if we don't buy the naughty things, if we don't have a cupboard full of crisps, if we don't have a cupboard full of biscuits, if we don't have a cupboard full of chocolate, we're not going to snack on them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then, then it's a question of making them ourselves and utilising the whole of the vegetable so we can make our own crisps. Yeah, that's great. I have found that during this, I have been much more mindful of wasting food. Like you say, there's, there's been things that I would probably, ashamedly, would have thrown out, but I've gone, actually, no, let's, let's keep that because, you know, we can't 
afford or be, be in a position to throw food out right now. Like everything is precious. And I don't know why my mindset wasn't like that before, but that's really taught me something about this. And, and I think that's a really valuable thing that I will take away. Like I say, I'm not the best.